So we have some new line combos for the Philadelphia Flyers today at practice in anticipation of Tuesday's rematch with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it raises some interesting questions about where exactly Sean Turier fits. I'm Charlie at Iowa BHLY Sports here with your Flyers post practice updating for East in Jersey at the Flyers Training Center. But as I said, new lines for the Flyers, understandably. The Flyers are shaking things up. Obviously, uh, lost a uh, tight one on Saturday to the Boston Bruins. Exciting game. Good first 40 minutes to the Flyers. Then big laps, giving up three goals to start the third. Then they push back. They cut it to one goal twice. Felix Sanford gives up a goal late uh, to kind of halt the comeback. Then Joel Fahrton scores again to cut it back to one. The Flyers are unable to tie it, though, to send it to overtime. So they end up with a tough loss. And that was after losing in blowout fashion to the East Toronto Maple Leafs on Thursday. So, unsurprisingly, Flyers are changing things up a little bit with the line combinations. However, line combinations are interesting, mostly because of what it says about one Sean Couturier. So, your first line, Owen Tippett, Morgan Frost, Traps Connecting. That makes sense. You have three guys who were top-notch uh, offensive players with Philadelphia Flyers. Morgan Frost had a gorgeous between-the-legs goal on Saturday. So, he's getting an opportunity with Owen Tippett and, and Traps Connecting. Makes sense. Then you have Joel Farabee, two goals on Saturday with Scott Lawton. Okay, Lawton maybe hasn't been at his best last few games, but they like the way he's played on the whole, rightfully so, over the past month or so. I get it. Then he's with Bobby Brake, a guy who, you know, has offensive ability, uh, maybe hasn't been always in the finish to good paresis, but makes sense for him to be in a school at all. Then things start getting a little interesting. So obviously you have the Noah Cates, Ryan Paling, Brian Hathaway line, which has been great for the past few weeks. Well that line has been apparently, at least for today, and see if it holds for tomorrow has been broken up. You have Tyson Forrester now with Ryan Kaling and Garner Hathaway. And then you have Noah Cates in the middle, centering Willie Lixell, who was called up today, and Nick Delorier, who scored his first goal of the season on Saturday. Then you have a line of Dennis Gurionov, who has been in and out of the lineup since being traded for at the deadline, Shaw Couturier, and Cam Atkinson, who obviously has been scratched regularly over the last two weeks, understandably so. The question here is, what does this say for Sean Baturi's place in line? Now, Sean Baturi hasn't been getting a lot of notes recently. He had 11 minutes on Saturday. The coaching staff, obviously, and I'll get to this in a few minutes, hasn't been super happy with him. But the idea of scratching the captain, if that is technically your fifth line, because it would be tough to imagine Noah Cates, who has played well, I'm going to be asking this morning, getting scratched. If he wouldn't be scratched at that whole line, that Curry on off Atkins and Couturier line is all planned to be healthy scratches. That's a pretty, pretty big decision for John Turrell to scratch his captain. We just named, you know, only about a month ago, he named uh, Sean Couturier a captain. He gave him one Valentine's Day. So we're only a little bit over a month with him while having to see. It's possible that Couturier may play. I'm not saying that for a fact that Sean Couturier is going to be scratched. But given the fact that they now have five lines, they move Noah Cates to the middle, essentially could be having him play in the Couturier role of a play-driving center who doesn't score a lot because Couturier had this word much recently. I don't know, just raises some eyebrows. So obviously, we spoke to Couturier after practice. It's unclear whether this is you know, in anticipation of a scratch or if it's just the fact he's not getting on ice time, but we talked to him out a little bit. And Couturier more or less said, look, if you would have asked him a couple weeks ago, and you would have asked him if he deserves the demotion, he would have said deep freeze. He feels like, you know, back then, a few weeks ago, he was making a lot of defensive mistakes, leading directing goals, and his demotion was justified. But he feels like over the last few games, his game has improved. And honestly, I'm going to have an article about this in the coming days, but I don't disagree with it. He didn't get an assist on McDelorier's first goal, but that goal does not happen if Shaw Couturier doesn't make a really good play behind the net. And that kind of sparked the comeback on that. <laughs> On, uh, on Saturday. He also had a really good play setting up Tyson Forrester's goal on Thursday. He did get a secondary assist on that one. Good play along the boards, wins a battle, gets the puck in the offensive zone, leads to a shorthanded goal. Now, that was in garbage time. Yeah, wasn't a, uh, a goal that had any impact on the game, but it does speak to Gatteri playing a bit better. I understand why Gatteri thinks he's playing better and he doesn't deserve just the 11 minutes that he got on Saturday. John Turrell, however, doesn't seem like he increased. Tortorella basically said, look, I need more from Sean Viterio. He's not going to get more ice time until I see more. His quote, more or less, was, you have to give me something to hang my hat on. In his mind, Sean Viterio has not given him something to hang his hat on. Viterio believes he has. Viterio believes his game is trending upward. So 
even if Couturier does end up in the lineup on Tuesday. And for full disclosure, I think he should be playing. I think Sean Couturier is playing terribly. I am definitely more on the side of Couturier's view of his recent play as opposed to Torres' view of his recent play. Even if Sean Couturier is in the lineup, he's likely not going to get a ton of ice time. So this is an issue. This is a disagreement that really does need to be worked out between these two guys. We'll see how it plays out. John Tortorella did say today after practice, he reiterated the respect he has from Sean Couturier, that he doesn't worry about Couturier taking this in a bad way. He has the captaincy. He doesn't worry about Couturier pouting or complaining or anything like that. That is not a concern from John Tortorella's perspective. However, if he goes with the nuclear option and sits Couturier for a game, I don't know if that's really a show of respect. So we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. It'll be interesting to see how they shake up the lines. I did ask Tortorella after practice about the fact that Noah Cage wasn't on the, uh, the Payton Hathaway line. Tortorella sort of implied that that might just be a one-day hit, and maybe he's just looking at Noah Cates in the middle, and maybe tomorrow Cates will be right back with his line mates on a line that the Flyers have really been depending upon uh, for not just good shifts, but offense as well. They've been depending on that line this past month. So we'll see. Maybe this was just a testing out thing, testing Cates out in the middle so they could use a mid-game if they really have to, if they want to shake things up. Maybe tomorrow the lines will be normal. However... Today was a bit eyebrow raised. Ole Luxell, for example, on that Cates line, Luxell was in the bumper position on a power play unit today. So that implies Luxell is likely to play. Usually if guys are on the power play, it means they're going to be in the lineup for the next game. And you usually don't see a guy practice on the power play and then end up helping stretch. So if Luxell's in and he's on a line with Cates, presumably Cates is in, and then presumably Deloria is in. And if those three guys are in, where does Chauvetier play? It's just going to be an interesting situation, definitely one to keep an eye on just by these lines we saw today and by the fact that there is a clear disagreement between John Tortorella and Sean Couture on the quality of his recent play. See how this plays out. In my mind, why are you going to need Sean Couture if they're going to want to get through what's left of this gauntlet of games? And they have some tough ones coming. Obviously, they have his ring match against the Maple Leafs uh, tomorrow on Tuesday, a team that blew them out less than a week ago. Then you've got the Carolina Hurricanes on Thursday. So, You've got really good teams basically through the middle of next week. It's a stretch that doesn't end until next Tuesday's game against the New York Rangers, another team the Flyers struggled to defeat this year. So in my mind, you're going to survive that call and let you go to each shelter to everyone's providing something. I think his game has been trending upward. So I don't think he deserves some scratch, but we'll see what the Flyers do. That's all I have for you. I'm Charlie with Honor from DHLY Sports, and thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.